Early round running backs give us some sense of expectation of what their value is going to be to us throughout the fantasy season, whether it's the offense that they're attached to, historical usage profiles for guys selected their ADP, or even just like hunting through their box score. But for the guys that are attached to good offenses, whether that be the Chargers, the Bucks, or whomever the case may be, figuring out that offense and who has the most value, or even just like kind of the guys that might have contingent value based off of injury upside, it's critical that we understand or have some sort of expectation for those guys. Just think about last year and how great it would have been for us to figure out how valuable Leonard Fournette was going to be to that offense attached to Tom Brady. So today I wanted to walk through another offense that is just as productive from a fantasy perspective and has, I mean, just as good of a quarterback or a passer attached to them under center. And that's the Buffalo Bills. I mean, trying to understand whether it's Devin Singletary, James Cook, Zach Moss, maybe not Zach Moss, uh, but trying to figure out like who we should be valuing, who we should be drafting now in some of our best ball drafts. Uh, I'm going to attempt to do that here on another episode of By the Numbers. And so today I wanted to at least walk through just my logic in trying to understand like what we can do with this Bills backfield. Like I mentioned at the top, we've got Devin Singletary, we've got Zach Moss still kicking around. And then of course the Bills investing in James Cook in the 2022 draft. And just looking at the Bills offseason moves and how they're evaluating their team and their needs, it just makes some sense that they're attempting to just adjust how Josh Allen pilots that offense. I mean, just looking at it like overall, this is the last year of his team-friendly deal before his extension kicks into play. I mean, his cap hit for 2022 is around, what, four to five million? And then next year, it kicks all the way up to 27.5 million. So this is, at least in my mind, an investment that they would want to try and protect. And overall, Josh Allen, I mean, the thing that has made him so great, not just his arm, the fact that the team has been top three, top five in pass rate over expectation the past couple of seasons, whether it's Stefan Diggs, Gabriel Davis, uh, Dawson Knox, like insert pass catcher here, but also the rushing, the Konami code that Josh Allen brings to his game, the dual threat ability. He's averaged 111 carries over the past three seasons. I mean, that's a lot of work like for a quarterback. And so while I think that they're trying to reduce some of that workload, he should still definitely be able to get his work in in the red zone. I mean, he's still been top three, top five in red zone carries. So while he might not have as much in between the 20s, the expectation, at least the hope is still there that he'll continue to be that guy once we get into the red zone. He'll dump, you know, he'll drop in for a couple of tutties here and there. But I mean, looking at the other moves that the team has done over the past, uh, past off season, I mean, of course, we all know about the J.D. McKissick saga or like news or whatever, however you want to describe it. I mean, him trying to go there, doesn't work out, goes back to the team, but also the other moves that they've also done as well. I mean, the extension for Isaiah McKenzie, okay, that was expected, but they also bring in Jameson Crowder. I mean, Duke Johnson is now kicking around like in uh, in that backfield as well. So they're bringing in some of these guys, I mean, some of these role players that can help them and also drafting Khalil Shakir. These guys, these role players that can help them on third down so that maybe Josh Allen won't be as apt to take the ball and run with it, instead passing to some of these guys as well. But I know what you're thinking, I know what you're thinking. I mean, passing to a running back, nah, there's no, that's not possible at all. I mean, and actually some of the numbers kind of bear that out. I mean, if you look at how the Bills offense has operated over the past year, just like just last season, I mean, they were, I mean, bottom four in RB targets. I mean, their target rate like to their running backs, and this is, data is uh, according to fantasy pros. And so I get it. You won't want to invest in that type of offense unless you think that that running back is going to be getting some of those carries, those money touches that we want. But I'm sorry, y'all. I mean, for as many years as some folks have been in these fantasy streets, haven't we been saying that targets are earned? Haven't we been saying that that's how folks like pass catchers, doesn't matter if it's a wide receiver or not. Isn't that how we always said that folks should be getting their targets? They're earned. Well, if I'm looking at some of these numbers, I don't see a way that either Zach Moss or Devin Singletary earned a target within within the passing offense for the Buffalo Bills. I mean, any out of all running backs that earned 20 or more targets last season, so 61, 61 running backs, Devin Singletary was dead last in EPA per target. I mean, both of them towards the bottom in efficiency. They were towards the top half in drop rate, and they weren't doing anything after the catch. Bottom half in yards after the catch. So now that you're telling me that they, the Bills, invested in a running back that was actually efficient as a uh, as a receiver, 12.1 yards after the catch in his best season with Georgia. It's also faster than both 
Devin Singletary and Zach Moss, like with a 4-4-2 speed, and that's going to be a part of their offense. So practically speaking, this should be a running back that we want to value. It should be a running back that we want to draft. But let's look, look about things in its totality. Let's look at things practically right now. Over on their dog, Devin Singletary is going as RB33. James Cook is going as RB35. And I can only see throughout the offseason, James Cook getting topped up throughout the offseason because he's the shiny new toy. But let's remember that Devin Singletary over the back half of the season, he was number 13 overall in terms of EPA per attempt from weeks 12 through 18. Hit the century mark a couple of times, scored six touchdowns over the last like five games of the season, all scored a few touchdowns in the playoffs. So while Cook might be the one to target now, let's watch how Devin Singletary's ADP func uh, changes throughout the offseason. He might be the one to fall in drafts. He will be the one to add more value. But for right now, I'm targeting Cook in my best ball drafts. So with that, check out some more of the content that we've got going on here on Football Guys. Alex Caruso talking about Damian Pierce. Victoria coming up with all the good stuff that she's got going on. Quarterbacks from last week. Can't wait to see what she's got going on this week. But in the meantime, stay safe, and I'll catch you all next week. Peace.